General Counsel, corporate action. You want to take us through it? Phyllis, you want to take us through it? Not corporate action. No, corporate action. I'll just first ask. Bob. With your permission, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to present a request for authorization to enter into contracts with two components of the financing team. The two components are specifically the real estate consultant and the financial advisor. By way of background, the board understands we're going to market. There are at least two compelling reasons to go to market. Last time we were out in the market in December of 2009, we accumulated about $80 some odd million of bonding proceeds. We are running and have commitments of projects beyond what's left of those proceeds from 2009. And we need money, so we have a capital plan. As the chairman said, we're meeting with the controller and the mayor because they have to approve that plan. So new money is one reason. The second reason, more importantly or as importantly, is there's some savings to be had. We have bonds issued in 2003. They're fixed debt. It's the 203A series. There's about $367 million of bonds. We can lower that rate since 2003 to now, lower markets, lowest historical fixed rate market municipal debt in our lifetime. So we can pick up some $64 million in TV savings on just reissuing that debt, just bringing the rate down. It's a gimme. Third reason to go to market, we have variable rate debt outstanding. And it's about $614 million collectively on the 2003B and C series. Some of that is hedged. $235 million of the $614 is not hedged. And anyway, we're paying out about 2.6% collectively in debt service on all that debt. It's very good under the terms and conditions of when we issued that debt. However, it's subject to market rate, interest rate increases. So we've got to be careful here. We've got to evaluate it now. We don't want to be caught short if the interest rate market starts to rise on us. That debt, as low as we're paying now, can go up quickly because the reset is tied to LIBOR. And LIBOR is very low. On the unhedged piece, we're paying 0.38%, 0.4%. Cheapest debt you can get, yes. It's all good news, but you've got to watch out and be careful. So for those reasons, we go to market. We did a process for the real estate consultant. The real estate consultant is an integral part of the team. They project the 30-year revenue stream on which we issue our debt. It is an independent report done by a high-level, named, letterhead, credible, reliable real estate consultant that the rating agencies can rely on, the bondholders can rely on, we can rely on in terms of getting a credible revenue projection. Now, there's two components of our revenue stream that are projected. The base land rents are easy. Base land rents are in the lease. There's some increases along the timeline until the end of the 2069 leasehold date. They only project 30 years, but when the lease requires that it goes up, the projection simply takes the most conservative, minimal lease mandatory increase. It doesn't try and guess to a market increase that it might go to, which the lease provides for. So base rent, pretty easy, slam dunk. The major component of our revenue stream, so 75-80%, is pilot, real estate taxes. That's the tricky part, and that's a lot of what the report does. You have to be, the firm selected has to understand the city process by which pilot real estate taxes are derived. It's a component of the real estate tax rate set by the city council, and as important as the Department of Finance of the City of New York does the assessments every year for all the buildings, you have to understand the methodology they base those assessments on. You have to understand the city policy both retroactively and going forward, due diligence with all the city players that set that policy, because that goes to the reliability of the 
75, 80 percent of the revenue stream. Just, you have to do it. You have to lay it out. The real estate consultants in the past have taken a conservative bent uh, in their assumptions and variables, which has been good for this authority because it builds up credibility, which is important with the rating agencies that give us the rate. Meaning when we go back to them every three or four years when we finance, we look. We look good. We always make our numbers and we do better than our numbers on the revenue side. So uh, there's a balance here. It is a 60, some odd 60 page report. It goes through all the policy, all the buildings, uh, and projects our revenue stream. And from that, we issue debt, bond buyers buy it, rating agencies set our rates. We did a process, uh, RFP, put together a team. Uh, we contacted all the firms that have done this in the past for this authority, including Christian Wakefield, Jones Line LaSalle, formerly Jones Line Wooten, HFF, Finiglio Fowler, uh, Metropolitan Valuations. Everybody that's ever bid on this was contacted, we advertised. We only received two bids. Um, one was uh, CBRE, which is the recommendation to uh, the board. The other was Jones Lang LaSalle. The bid came in late. I don't mean minutes late, it came in hours late. Uh, we consulted internally, didn't open the bid. Um, and therefore, the committee, you know, didn't have to do interviews and all that. We, we recommending CBRE. CBRE bid a cost proposal. They are the incumbent. They were on the December 09 financing I just mentioned, passed. They did the same price they did in 09. Uh, they did not increase it. Uh, they're familiar with the authority's revenue, very familiar with the authority's revenue. They have a complex model uh, which, if you start from scratch, is problematic, but they have a model that they've used in the past uh, to project our revenues. Uh, they have the experience, the knowledge of city policy. They're a letterhead firm that everybody can rely on. So with that, we're recommending for the real estate consultant component, uh, CBRE. They are the longest lead time in the working bond financing group. It takes a while to put together this report. You know, the banker is <coughs> us and everybody's, give me the top line, give me the projection, but there's a lot of meat that goes on that, that bone, and they're going to make sure it's iterative back and forth. They're going to make sure they get it. Yes, sir, but they got to start work right away. Response. That's the best thing. have one response from a qualified incumbent at no incremental cost to the authority relative to our lease experience. All true, so. Okay. So that's the real estate consultant side, the FA. Well, Bob, is there any argument that it should have been, if it was a competitive situation, less than what we paid previously because they got all this installed basic information and their starting point is stronger, et cetera? Well, last time, last time, a good point, last time they did bid in 09, there were three competitors. Two other competitors, at least. I think there was three other bids selected. It was competitive, and it was a competitive price in 2009. So, uh, somewhat, yeah, they have a ground floor model. They, they're not using that model. They've got to update it and make all the changes they have to change. But, uh, you know, years have passed, and you could argue that uh, costs have gone up and they could have bid higher. They didn't know what the other parties were going to bid or if they were going to bid. They didn't know that they were the only Absolutely. How many bids did you get for us? Uh, it's either three or four, if I remember. I know it's at least three. I, good question. I don't know. I mean, we, we reached out affirmatively to everybody that's ever bid. Not that it's just won the bid. Again, the people that have done it, the firms that have done it in the past with Christian and Wakefield, who's <coughs> only the sound. Uh, but uh, we we contacted everybody, made sure they had the option. Just so we didn't leave anybody in the um, The FA, uh, financial advisor, very important position to the financing team. It advises myself, the board, this authority to uh, 
on all matters, scheduling matters, and most important at the end game, the pricing matters, the, the, the scale that goes out in bond buyers buy our bonds at what price. They're there at our right arm telling us uh, whether the bankers are selling uh, snake oil or giving a second opinion to us on every matter, an independent second opinion, and they're not paid 